thank you all so much for joining us today. I really appreciate you coming to Training Tuesday. All right, so let's go over what we're going to talk about today. We have some updates, then we're going to do a countdown. We're going to talk about making of a solicitation, where you can find some additional bid by training and our other procurement training, as well as our life hack for today. All right, updates and reminders. The bid by, bid by update will be happening on 9-15, which is this coming Friday. Bid by will be going down at 6 p.m. Please make sure that you are logged out as any work completed after this may not be saved and you will be kicked out of bid by during this downtime. The update is fixing the search bar at the top of bid by to allow you to search by only the last numerical numbers relating to your procurement. The bid and PO were already working to allow for that, but the REC was not working. Uh, this update will again allow you to search for RECs by only those last digits of your full bid by number. If you are a member, member of IAPO, you can join your Illinois procurement peers in Oak Brook, October 4th through the 6th for the fall conference. You must be registered to attend by September 30th. You can find all the uh, details on the IAPO website. Additionally, IAPO elections are occurring right now for president, treasurer, and board seats uh, five and six. You can vote now through October 10th. All right, I thought it might be fun to use these festive gnomes to count down to the end of the calendar year. As you can see here, we've already entered pumpkin spice season. I know some of you are probably like, oh, I wanna hold on to summer. I am so excited about pumpkin spice season. All right, we have Halloween happening though in 49 days, Thanksgiving in 72 days, and New Year's Eve is 110 days away. So with the holidays quickly approaching, it does mean that we get to look forward to more family time. Remember though, that during these times, several people do use their vacation for holiday traveling, and it may impact your procurement timeline. If you have procurements that need to be completed by the end of the calendar year or in early January, we highly suggest that you work with your end users and STO to get these completed quickly. If you would like to run a report of your expiring contract or you're unsure of how to run that report in bid by, please review the May 30th training Tuesday that we completed. All right, so let's go into making of a solicitation. Solicitations are maps of where our starting point is, how to provide a response, what the agency will review, how an award will be made, and the final outcome that the agency needs to get to. In a solicitation, we need to make sure that these things are included and considered. Uh, these things are the time frame for responses, contract requirements, mandatories, desirables, which are only for our RFPs, pricing, and the award method. Let's dive into each of these points. So time frame for responses. Small purchases, small purchases should provide vendors three to five business days to respond to the request for quotes. IFCs and RFPs by law have to be published for a minimum of 14 calendar days. If an agency has a complicated procurement, meaning several mandatories, desirables, or a request for mock-ups of the requested goods or services, then the agency should consider if they would receive better responses or potentially more competition for a greater amount of time or if a greater amount of time was allowed for responding. This is something to discuss with your STO prior to submitting in bid buy for publication. When determining how long vendors should have to respond, you'll also need to consider if a pre-submission conference, sometimes referred to as a site visit, would be beneficial to the responding vendors. There are two types of conferences, mandatory and optional. Dependent upon what the agency is soliciting, 
will help you to determine whether you should use mandatory, optional, or not have one at all. However, for either type of conference, uh, you will need to make sure that you define where the, de where the vendor is to report to for the conference, what time, if there are any potential delays they may encounter at your site, like a security stop, if they have to be pre-approved by a back background check before coming onto the agency's location, if there is a limit of how many people from a company can attend due to space limitations, or anything else regarding their attendance. Whether you've decided to do in-person or virtual, mandatory or optional, you have a pre-submission pre conference site visit uh, form that you must complete and have the vendor sign in. This is a requirement of CPO Notice 2020.03. All right, contract requirements. Well, when looking at these, you'll need to consider when do you need the goods or services? Agencies have an active need when they are issuing a small purchase or a solicitation. It is generally assumed that the agency needs delivery as soon as possible after the contract is executed. But assumptions are not part of the contract. The agency needs to specify in the solicitation when the goods or services delivery should be. This may be delivery schedules. For instance, the agency may need delivery of 2,000 widgets the first business day of each quarter. Or it may be a larger project that has milestones that have to be met and accepted, accepted throughout the contract term. Additionally, it may be a simple one-time delivery that has to be completed by a certain date. This can definitely be the case towards the end of the fiscal year and the agency is assuring that the delivery happens by a certain date or else that year's fiscal funding will not be available for that contract and would have to roll over to the next fiscal year budget. Contracts, contract requirements should also include when can the vendor perform the work? As important as it is to have the milestones, deliverables, and final delivery date included in the solicitation, it is also important to alert the vendor when they will be able to do the work. Do you have a high traffic area or public area where the deliveries can't be made during peak times? Are you soliciting for a consultant and you want that consultant to be available during your normal work hours? Will you also have them observe Illinois state holidays? You also need to consider where does the vendor have to perform the work? Along with the time frame, you will also need to tell them where they will be at while they are providing the goods or services. Can they work remote when providing services? Do they have to be on site at the agency? If so, will they need to pass a background check prior to being permitted on site. Finally, you also need to make sure that you're covering who has the responsibility during performance. It is critical to the success of the contract that the vendor and the agency both have clearly defined responsibilities. Without responsibilities of all parties clearly defined, it can create lags and frustration between the agency and the vendor. In these situations, we often see requests for change orders or scope creep because of the undefined nature of the contract. Mandatories. It's easy to identify a mandatory requirement because these require the vendor to perform that specification. We generally see the language must, shall, or will used to clearly define them as a mandatory. If a vendor fails to meet a mandatory requirement, they will be disqualified if it's a small purchase, and they would be deemed non-responsive for a competitive solicitation. It's very important to assure that your mandatories are clearly defined so that your agency can confirm if the vendor meets that mandatory with certainty. It's very important not 
to be overly restrictive in the mandatory requirements. When identifying your mandatory requirements, it's important to ask if you could still use the goods or services without that mandatory as you're currently having it listed. For instance, if you're purchasing a vehicle, it would be important for it to have sun, a sun visor. However, differing dimensions of the sun visor or different colors of the sun visor would not be a reason not to purchase the vehicle. We also see several procurements that are for services. In these specifications, we often see specific titles that the agency needs accompanied by the qualifications of that title. We understand in several cases that the agency would like to have that resource fulfilling that title to have some experience so that they are able to work independently on the project they are being assigned. However, please provide your SPO with supporting justification, such as published job titles that are similar to what the agency is seeking to show that this is a standard. Desirables are used for requests for proposals, also known as RFPs. We utilize desirables to promote the vendor to tell us how they will meet the agency's needs. Desirables are also, um, they also use permissive language such as should or may. Although you may really need to see how the vendor will provide a report, but you want to evaluate um, their ad hoc reporting capabilities, then you would utilize a desirable and ask that they explain and provide examples of their ad hoc reporting capabilities. Overall, desirables will be evaluated based on what was requested, the intended use as defined in the RFP and the vendor's proposal. All right, pricing is another element of our solicitation that must be included. Per CPO notice 2022.08, the agency must use bid by for vendors to provide the pricing. In limited instances, it may be appropriate for an agency to utilize a pricing attachment to collect the vendor's pricing. But this deviation from process should have been approved, uh, previously approved by the SPO before you put it into bid by. When issuing a solicitation, we need to make sure that the pricing is set up in a manner that is consistent with the industry. For instance, if we are asking for pricing to be submitted as a cost per perpetual license fee, but the industry no longer offers perpetual licenses and has moved towards a subscription offering, the agency is likely to have a failed procurement because the vendors will not be able to provide pricing as requested. Or if a vendor does respond, the pricing may be extremely cost prohibitive because again, it's not how the industry offers these goods or services. You will also need to align your pricing so that it matches the solicitation. If you are asking for a new system implementation, training and training materials to be provided, and then yearly maintenance of the new system, we would expect to see pricing related to each of these areas. You will also need to assure that pricing matches the terms of the solicitation. This means that if you have renewal terms identified in your solicitation, you will need to collect renewal term pricing as well. When you, whenever you are creating your pricing lines, please assure to group like items. If you have regions or groups of items, items that fall under a category, like canned goods, may be an overall group, but then you could have lines under that group for corn, green beans, baked beans, pineapple, pears, and so on. Then you would potentially have a group for your dry items, such as rice and noodles. If you don't have groups of these types, you should still consider keeping all of your initial term items together and then your renewal line items together and in the same order. Award methods. In the solicitation document, you must clearly define how the award will be made. There are a few different methods that we commonly see. These include line item. An award by a line item is where we actually award to the lowest uh, price for each line. 
award by group or region. As we discussed on the last slide, it may be appropriate to split pricing by a group um, to get all of your canned goods for um, one vendor and all of your dry goods from another vendor. In other instances, it may be the best choice for the agency to award by region of the state. Total cost is where we look at the total cost of all pricing provided. When awarding a small purchase or IFB, we will be awarding to the lowest cost responsive and responsible vendor in any of these pricing scenarios. In RFPs, we generally see total cost used um, most frequently. The vendor with the lowest cost receives the most pricing points. However, it does not mean that they will be the awarded vendor. The solicitation must clearly outline how many points are available for technical, commitment to diversity, and pricing, and that the award will be made to the overall highest scoring vendor. All of this together helps us build a solicitation that's worth putting out. All right, so let's go into where you can find additional trainings. Visit our training center to find out more. Uh, our next training for introduction to Illinois procurement is going to be held on October 4th. It's coming right up. You do need to pre-register for this course. It is worth uh, two contact hours. All right, our bid by monthly training was held last Wednesday on September 6th. Our next monthly bid by session will resume our normal schedule of the second Wednesday of each month. So the next one will be held on October 11th. Our bid by practice sessions, those are every second and third Thursday. They start at 9 a.m. We do not have a published agenda. This is uh, your space to make it what you need. So if you're new to bid by or experienced in bid by, but you would like to have us help you troubleshoot how to specifically handle scenario in bid by, please join us and we can walk through it with you. All right, now onto our life hack. So if any of you are like me, I will do about anything to get out of irony. Um, I did not get that trait from either one of my grandmas who used to press things all the time. I think they've kind of let go of their intensive ironing too over the years, but um, overall, I hate ironing. Well, a quick solution is to throw wrinkled clothes in the dryer on the highest setting with a handful of ice cubes. The ice will evaporate and the steam will re release the wrinkles. As soon as it gets dry, get your shirt out of the dryer and hang it up or wear it. Additionally, uh, Derek Hibbler at CMS also wrote in with a no ironing hack. He stated that if you don't feel like ironing your wrinkled polo shirt, Spray it with water while the shirt is on a clothes hanger. Leave it hanging for about 30 minutes and it will come out as good as new. Thanks again, Derek, for that submission. All right, if you have any questions, you can email us at cpogs.training at illinois.gov or ask your SPO if you have some uh, specific questions regarding your procurement. Thanks again. Have a great day.